Right now, live at 5, the holidays are over and COVID cases are spiking. What health officials expect for the new year. Plus, the ways that Duluth Public Schools is working to keep kids safe and COVID free as they come back from holiday break. And someone in two harbors is kicking off 2022 $1 million richer. You're watching Live at 5 on Live Local CBS3. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Kristen Vaki. Briggs has the night off. The FDA has taken another big step in the battle against COVID-19 today as cases continue to surge in much of the country. Wendy Gillette reports from New York City where new cases jumped more than 200% in two weeks. The FDA authorized vaccine boosters for children ages 12 to 15 years old. The agency also said everyone 12 and older eligible for the third dose of the Pfizer vaccine can get it five months after their second dose rather than six months. We're most interested in making sure that uh, we prevent uh, serious outcomes such as hospitalization and deaths, which granted, though uncommon uh, in 12 to 15 year olds, can occur. The CDC still has to sign off on the booster for younger teens. The move comes as the number of new U.S. cases hit an all-time high last week, nearly half a million in one day. In Florida, positive COVID cases soared past 40,000 per day last week. Particularly South Florida, we do believe it's overwhelmingly Omicron infections that are incurring, but Delta is still there. In New York City, where new cases jumped 218 percent in just two weeks, children headed back to school. I know her class, they had a couple kids in there that was tested positive. So we're going to see. New Mayor Eric Adams greeted students in the Bronx and vowed not to return to virtual learning. We're staying open. Millions of COVID tests have been sent to schools across New York City to make sure those who are infected stay home. We need more testing. Testing needs to increase across the country to be able to stop the spread of the virus. New York City's school chancellor announced a new COVID command center to report pandemic-related issues, including problems with testing and lack of staff. Wendy Gillette, CBS News, New York. The FDA also authorized a third dose for certain immunocompromised children ages 5 to 11 years old. Duluth students are returning to the classroom tomorrow after winter break, but before they head back, the district is making COVID testing accessible for everyone. The district held two pop-up testing locations today, one on the east end of Duluth and one on the west. The testing site was available to families, students, and staff within the district. They were prepared to give 800 total tests, 400 at each location. Superintendent John Mega says keeping both staff and students healthy and at school is still a main focus. So we're really trying to do everything possible to, to balance safety and also making sure that we keep our kids in person for in-person learning. The superintendent says he hopes these post-break tests will help ease the strain brought on by substitute teacher and bus driver shortages in the district. They hope to do more like this in the future. Meanwhile, in Superior, students return to school from winter break. Superior Public Schools currently has no testing requirement and will not require its students to wear masks. In the last week of classes before break, five students tested positive for COVID-19, down from 50 earlier in the month. The school board is holding a meeting tonight. Members are expected to discuss the mask policy. We'll have a reporter at that meeting and we'll bring you the latest at 10 o'clock. Still no word on what caused a house fire that killed twin brothers just north of Duluth. Fire crews responded to the Kenosha Township home just before noon Saturday for the report of a house fire. The person calling 911 said they stopped by the home to check on the brothers that lived there after not hearing from them for several days. The bodies of 68-year-old twin brothers Jerry and Terry Rouse were found in the home. Crews determined a fire happened sometime over the past few days. It went out on its own, but caused extensive heat and smoke damage. According to the St. Louis County Sheriff's Office, one twin died from smoke inhalation and burns. The other died of both smoke inhalation and carbon monoxide. The department says their deaths appear accidental. There was not a working smoke nor carbon monoxide detector in the home. 
The cause of the fire appears accidental and remains under investigation. January is National Human Trafficking Awareness Month. Northeastern Minnesota leaders are shining a light on how the issue impacts the local community. CBS 3's Larissa Millis tells us what leaders are hoping to accomplish through this Awareness Month. Larissa. Yeah, in a virtual opening ceremony today, city and tribal leaders and representatives from organizations like PASVA and ACO kicked off Human Trafficking Awareness Month. According to the National Human Trafficking Hotline, human trafficking is when someone uses force, fraud, or, co or coercion to control another person for the purpose of engaging in commercial sex acts or soliciting labor or services against their will. Leaders at today's event say trafficking is often preceded by domestic violence and sexual assault. The Duluth Trafficking Awareness Coalition will be putting on various training events and presentations throughout January. Some of those events include a Trafficking 101 presentation, Native Lives Matter Coalition events, panels on the intersection of missing, murdered Indigenous women and trafficking, a training for healthcare providers, and a panel with survivor experts about the aftermath of trafficking. Mayor Emily Larson spoke during the opening ceremony, saying it's important everyone knows the signs of trafficking. Until all people are home and safe and valued, whether they live in this community or some other community in the state of Minnesota, in this country or in the world, our work to end human trafficking will continue. Signs someone is being trafficked include they live with their employer, they're not allowed to speak with someone alone, their answers sound scripted, their employer is holding their personal documents, or they appear fearful. The Duluth Human Trafficking Awareness Coalition Facebook page is holding events all month, which they'll live stream on their Facebook page. Starting today through this Thursday, Anger Tower will also be lit blue as part of the event. All right, Larissa Mellis in studio for us tonight. Thanks, Larissa. Well, Dave joins us now for a first check of the weather. Dave, it sounds like some snow might be headed our way, huh? Yeah, out of the freezer and into yeah. the snow is the way it's going, it seems. Boy, did it get cold this weekend, huh? 30 to 40 below for inland Minnesota towns. That will be coming back again after we get the snow. So if the snow makes it a little slippery tomorrow, the payoff, the reward for putting up with it will be at least it gets warmer. Take a look at the slew of advisories we will be facing from our next snow system that comes in Tuesday afternoon and lasts through Wednesday afternoon. We'll have a winter weather advisory for Minnesota and the western parts of Wisconsin. There's a winter storm watch going up for folks in the UP. And then for the snow belt from the Bayfield Peninsula through Iron County, a winter storm warning. Because I think three to six inches of snow will fall for most zones, especially on the Minnesota side of life. But six plus, maybe even six towards ten possible for the snow belt there is that low pressure system which is starting right now as a clipper comes out of the Rocky Mountains but by the time it gets a snoo full of uh, Lake Superior moisture it's going to pack a snowy punch looking at our short-term forecast tonight we set the stage by increasing the clouds those clouds will keep it above zero five above for our low temp tonight that'll feel tropical then 23 above tomorrow that 40% snow chance begins in the afternoon. I'll talk more about snow totals and how long this system lasts and how cold it'll get when it leaves coming up in a few more minutes. All right, thanks, Dave. Still to come on Live at 5, start your engines safely this winter with the Silver Bay Police Department. More on their upcoming course as we take you around the Northland after the break. I decided to attend Lucuda Ojibwe College because it really dawned on me how much it felt like a family and how much it felt like home and I had a hard time seeing myself anywhere else. Hi, I'm Dr. Joshua Larson, a general surgeon at St. Luke's. Specifically in the field of general surgery, I found that I'm often meeting patients at their most vulnerable. I try to empower them with the knowledge they understand their disease process, but I want them to feel confident and comfortable with the direction that their treatment's going. The most satisfying part of my job really is establishing relationships, particularly with my patients, but also with my colleagues and everybody as part of the surgical team. It's very rewarding to all be working together for the common good of the patient that's in front of us. Hello, Jim Peralt from Jim Peralt Construction here with our roof ice removal crew using our Arctic steamer. Forget using ice picks, hatchets, hammers, or salt that can damage your roof and home. We can safely remove ice from roofs and gutters using steam. By removing the ice, we will be protecting your home from water infiltration due to ice backup and the excessive weight of snow and ice on your eaves. Call us at Jim Peralt Construction, 723-8477. 
to have our crew come out and take the snow and ice off of your roof. School visits are an important part of kind of being a uh, part of the community outside of the TV station here. When I was in sixth grade, that's when I learned meteorology was it for me. Being on the other side of that now, for me being able to kind of pursue that, it's important for me to then be able to get back into the community. If I can go into a classroom and get just one person who was interested or just one person who, you know, leaves there knowing like, wow, I learned something new today. For me, I did my job and that means a lot to me. Watch meteorologist Kate Lynn Moffitt, weekdays at 5 a.m. I'm Nora O'Donnell in our nation's capital. We're here at the White House with the President of the United States. Thanks for having me. Our exclusive access to the presidential platform. We will witness yet another moment in history. The CBS Evening News with Nora O'Donnell from Washington, D.C. Welcome back to the CBS 3 News Live at 5. Here's a live look from Duluth tonight. Temps have been pretty cold so far in 2022, but a slight warm-up may be on its way. Dave will be in with this week's full forecast in a couple of minutes, but first, let's take a look around the region. A Habitat for Humanity opportunity in Tower and new entry guidelines for the library in Drummond. All of that and more as we take you around the Northland city by city. We start in the Silver Bay area tonight where the local police department is offering a safety class for youth later this week. The Silver Bay Police Department, the Lake County Sheriff's Office and the Minnesota DNR will host a snowmobile safety class this Saturday from 8 a.m. to noon. Youth ages 11 to 15 are welcome but must register by Wednesday. Snowmobiles will be provided but students must bring their own helmet. Next, we head to Tower, Minnesota, where they are looking for a family willing to move to town. The Tower Economic Development Authority is looking for a family to partner with the North St. Louis County Habitat for Humanity to build a new home in the community. Families must be willing to invest 200 hours of volunteer time building their own or other local homes in the region. The new homeowner will also have a 30-year mortgage on the home. We will have a link to more information on our website. And we wrap up in Drummond, Wisconsin, where the public library is changing its entry guidelines starting tomorrow. Visitors will be required to wear masks and the capacity limit will be set at 15. Public computer use will be limited to one hour and staff will continue to sanitize commonly used spaces. Curbside service is also available to those interested. We will have a link to the library's entry and safety guidelines on our website. And if there's something going on in your neighborhood that you think we should know about, send us an email and it might be featured as we go around the Northland city by city. Still to come on Live at 5, the newest Minnesota millionaire is from the North Shore, which community should be double checking their tickets coming up. This morning's low was only two below, a sign of a small warm up coming our way. The warm up will bring a decent chance for perhaps moderate to even heavy snow for some towns Tuesday into Wednesday. And we'll show you the map of what zones those are going to be, along with a look at how cool it's going to get when the snow goes, coming up after our break. Stay connected to live local CBS3. Check out our exclusive content on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, as well as our mobile app, and join the conversation on today's big stories. I'm Carrie Harris, owner of Diabetic and Comfort Shoes. We have been in business in the Northland, helping you with your everyday foot problems stemming from diabetes to plantar fasciitis for the past 17 years. Stop in and see the complete line of men's and women's shoes, from SAS to Allegria to Vionic, for those millions of people battling plantar fasciitis. And we still have a great selection of comfortable shoes for diabetics. Medicare and Minnesota health care approved. Remember, no foot problem is too big or too small. We'll find the way to your soul. We're all just trying to keep things running for those who rely on us. That's why we don't have time to be sick with the flu. We don't have time for delays. Ready! We don't have time for spills. Next. We don't have time for setbacks. Let's be real. Getting the flu shot helps you fight the flu. Get a flu shot for yourself and those around you, too. Heart attacks and strokes happen, even in the midst of COVID-19. And at least one will occur while you're watching this. Heart attacks and strokes are medical emergencies. 
If you experience symptoms of a heart attack or stroke, do not delay seeking care. Call 911 immediately. Hospitals are prepared and can safely treat you. Visit cdc.gov slash coronavirus to learn more. Join us weeknights for Live at 5 as we go around the Northland city by city. When severe weather hits, tune to CBS 3 for up-to-date coverage morning and night. If you love them enough to crawl into a play place to get them to come down, then surely you'll check NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to make sure they're in the right car seat. CBS 3 Duluth Weathermax forecast with meteorologist Dave Anderson. Well, it definitely was a chilly one around here during the weekend. Arctic blast covered all towns. We are warming up right now as clouds build back. Those clouds are associated with a low pressure system from the west. And so temperatures will go up uh, at least a little bit for a couple of days here. Tuesday and Wednesday, out of those clouds, we get a chance for snow. For Minnesotans, probably light to moderate. For Wisconsin and Michigan, perhaps moderate to even heavy and once that goes by thursday the arctic cold snap returns and we're back into the freezer for the following weekend so we'll eye all of the charts up covering this here after we look at these current conditions from duluth international it's 11 degrees there right now and clouds are already increasing the wind is northwesterly five miles per hour for the moment and the relative humidity is 77 percent into the temperatures well, in northern Minnesota, away from the lake, we could dip below zero again tonight, but not as far below as the past couple of mornings. So, again, we call that a warm-up. At this moment, it is two in Hibbing, 14 for Moose Lake, and three up the Gunfoot Trail. Uh, Michigan, 16 and 17 degrees from Watersmeet to Ironwood. Northern Wisconsin current numbers are running 14 in Superior to 17 in La Pointe here. Milder temps with us through tomorrow, maybe Wednesday as well. It's Thursday when the Arctic blast comes to call once again. So eyeing up the situation here, we are looking at uh, the Upper Peninsula facing a winter storm watch for Tuesday and Wednesday. Winter storm warning for the Bayfield Peninsula area through towards Iron County. And then Minnesota and a slice of Wisconsin winter weather advisory. So these clouds, once they thicken from this approaching low pressure system from the west, are going to be bringing us some fair chances for snow. 40% tomorrow afternoon for Minnesota, 60 plus percent for Wisconsin, Michigan. And what do we think is going to happen as far as timing goes? We're thinking about one o'clock in the afternoon tomorrow. That snow starts to make its presence felt from the northwest as the system goes down towards the southeast. So beginning up around International Falls, then filling into the rest of the region overnight and finally departing most of the area by tomorrow evening, though it could linger longer thanks to lake effect for the snow belt. That's why their totals are going to be heavier. So as far as the totals go, I'm thinking most Minnesota towns could go about three to six inches. For the South Shore, we could go about three to six, maybe even seven or eight. And into the snow belt, six to ten inches possible there again, thanks to lake influence. All right, let's move on into the seven-day forecast here for tonight in Minnesota. Could be as cold as seven below International Falls, but that's child's play for the icebox of the nation. Nine degrees above zero by the lake. Mostly cloudy sky builds in. And that crosses over to Wisconsin and the UP as well, where low temps there run a range of three to seven above for a change. Tomorrow's high temps will be warmer than normal. Wisconsin, Michigan, mid-20s. 60% chance for that moderate to heavy snow to begin in the afternoon. For Minnesotans, it's a 40% chance for light to moderate snow to begin. High 15 well inland to 26 right by the lake. And then we get to Thursday and the bottom falls out again. 10 below, one above for a high. Oh, it stays pretty chilly. 20 below Friday morning, Kristen. It may warm up again briefly on Saturday with another light snow chance to 15 above. And then back to 5 to 15 below once that goes away too. January is here and it's letting us know. It, it is here, that is for sure. Between the snow and the cold temperatures, a true winter. Yep. To start off True the new North year. Land winter is here. Sure is. Thanks, Dave. Well, someone in two harbors is starting off the new year one million dollars richer. The Minnesota Lottery says a one million dollar ticket was sold at the Quick Trip in two harbors. The convenience store on 7th Street will get a five thousand dollar bonus for selling that prize winning ticket. The ticket is part of the 16th annual Minnesota Millionaire Raffle, which went on sale in October and sold out in a record 30 days. Lottery officials say 
make sure you check your tickets and if you have a winner, stop on by. It's National Blood Donor Month and Minnesota's senior senator held a virtual roundtable to discuss the state's blood shortage. Senator Amy Klobuchar spoke with leaders from the American Red Cross and Memorial Blood Centers. They say blood donations have dropped 10% since the start of the pandemic and are currently the lowest in a decade. Many blood drives in schools and businesses have been canceled as well. Angela Engblom with Memorial Blood Centers in Duluth says they have had to pass blood around hospitals to make sure everyone has enough supply. But it has been really a big challenge. We have moved blood around. We've you know, had to, like I said, we reduced inventory at the hospital, so they're not as comfortable with what they have because, you know, a lot of our hospitals are a couple hours away from us. Historically, organizers say January is the time of year when blood donations start to drop off after the holidays, even as demand remains high. It's that time of the show where we get to talk about adoptable pets, and today's pet comes to us from Northwoods Humane Society in Hayward. And you might recognize him this is Goofy. He's an eight-year-old large breed mix full of love and muscle. We have featured him before. Goofy was surrendered to the shelter after a divorce and he is still there nearly 500 days later. Our friends at the shelter tell us they are shocked he is still available because he is a fun loving companion who just loves to snuggle, is good on walks, and loves some playtime. One drawback is he is best as the only dog in the house. His adoption fee has been sponsored and so has six months of food. If you would like to set up an appointment to adopt Goofy, you can call the number on your screen. Let's get this guy a new home in the new year. Still to come, while fitness is often a New Year's resolution, researchers have discovered many turn to it during the pandemic as well. Their findings after the break. I protect this house every time I step on the ice. J3 Insurance protects my house, my family, and everything important to me 24-7. Visit or call J3 Insurance today and protect what matters to you. I remember my son was going to grow up without a father. I didn't think someone at 23 could be diagnosed with breast cancer. I was probably the healthiest I had been in my life. Early detection of a melanoma saved my life. I survived testicular cancer because of early detection. I survived cancer not once but twice because of early detection. During the pandemic, you may have delayed or canceled routine cancer screenings. It's time to get those appointments back on the books. Early detection saves lives. This message brought to you by the National Association of Broadcasters in this station. I know, but mom, don't skip your recommended vaccines. They help protect you against certain diseases, so ask your doctor or pharmacist about any recommended vaccines you may need. Skip the other stuff instead, like, I don't know. Skip the pants. <laughs> huh? They're already doing that. Nice. Hi, Dad. Hey, Cully. Yeah, so skip one of those mini Zoom parties. No, no, mom, no. Not our Zoom party. I lost her. Do you think it's time for schools to reopen? There is some positive breaking news. We've got a lot of important new information for you and your family. We've got new information now explaining why. Why should ordinary Americans care what's happening here in Ukraine? Deep divisions remain. Elizabeth, why did they kick you out? They are expecting public unrest. Why are they releasing these videos now? Police are pushing us back. We found one hell of a story of survival. That's why you have to do your own research to get to the truth. I'm just so excited to be back with Kristen on the anchor desk. It's been so long, but it feels like it's been no time at all. Yeah. I feel like we just have a great connection and having someone come on to the show who loves the area as much as I do, who knows the area as well as I do. Like, she's from here. I mean, it's it's the perfect fit. Live local to a team. Yeah. <laughs> Watch Kristen at Briggs at 5 and 6 p.m. Dear Lifehouse, when people ask who raised me, I say you. I was homeless, lost, and alone. 
You helped me find my way. You helped me up. I started to believe someone could love me. I'm doing things I never thought I could. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Lifehouse has been rooted in hope for 30 years with a mission to reconnect homeless and street youth to their dreams. We never give up on our youth, ever. As many of us contemplate hitting the gym this year, British researchers, along with scientists, found something surprising about folks who avoided gaining weight during the pandemic. CBS's Ian Lee reports. When COVID shut everything down, Lily Hutchinson had time on her hands. I really actually used that time in the pandemic to just exercise as much as I could. With gyms closed across the UK, she biked at home until they reopened. Welcome to your Wednesday athletica session. I'm Amber, this is Kim. Amber Nakamura taught classes online until she was back in her London studio. So we've definitely seen a much wider group of people coming in. She also noticed many newcomers shared something in common. I think that probably scared and motivated a lot to just get in, work on their fitness levels, try to improve their overall health. These stories aren't unique. In the world's largest nutrition study with nearly a million volunteers in the U.S. and U.K., researchers saw something they didn't expect during the pandemic. What's really surprising is our research showed that for a large proportion of the population, it was actually an impetus to get healthier. Scientists found 32% of participants pushed themselves, losing an average of nearly 9 pounds. 33% ate more fruits and vegetables, while 22% snacked less. The people that started off before the pandemic with the least healthy diet and lifestyle behaviors went on to lose weight rather than gain weight, to improve their diet, to increase their physical activity and to improve their sleep habits. Lily also noticed more than a physical change. The mental rewards I get from it after are just beyond worth it. The pandemic giving some the time to focus on getting fit, both physically and mentally. Ian Lee, CBS News, London. Not everyone went on a health kick, though. While nearly a third of participants lost weight, researchers found about the same amount of people gained more than seven pounds. And we've got a lot of news to cover tonight. Holiday travels, perfect storm, fast moving winter weather and the pandemic leaves travelers stranded and thousands of flights canceled. Plus the big news from the FDA about when and who can get a booster. And Unifying America, the dinner party that is bringing red and blue America together through good food and conversation. I like that. That's tonight here on the CBS Evening News. CBS 3 closed captioning is brought to you by Essentia Health Pharmacies. Keeping things safe, simple, and convenient through mail, local delivery, drive through and curbside pickup services. I'm telling you, you should open a business. <laughs> I wouldn't know where to begin. I've got an idea. I hope you like it. I love it. Just one question. Mm -hmm. What's that? It's a chair. New plan. You make the furniture. I make the ideas. NBC makes them happen. That was always the plan. Bring us your best ideas. National Bank of Commerce. We make more possible. Start the new year off right with Menards Bag Sale. Pick up a bag in store and get 15% off everything you can fit in the bag. Now through January 15th. Whether you pack it, load it, stuff it, or stack it. From light bulbs to tools, snacks, and much more. Fit it in the bag and save 15%. So pick up a bag in store and find out how much you fit in the bag. Now through January January 15th. Save big money at the Nards. Do you suffer from lower back pain while standing or walking? Northland Anesthesia Associates is here to provide you with surgical free pain relief. With a fellowship trained and board certified staff, they offer each patient a customized effective treatment plan. Call today for the relief you deserve. Eric Paulson here from Discover Wisconsin. Join me and the rest of the crew every week on this station for all things Wisconsin. Continue the adventure on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and discoverwisconsin.com. And don't forget to subscribe to The Cabin Podcast, available wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. If
If you love them enough to crawl into a play place to get them to come down, then surely you'll check NHTSA.gov slash the right seat to make sure they're in the right car seat. Welcome back to the CBS 3 News Live at 5. Here's a live look from Canal Park on this Monday evening. Let's take a look back at today's top story and see what's coming up at 6. Tonight at 5, we heard from Duluth School Superintendent John Magus as the district works to keep kids safe while also getting them back to in-person learning. Duluth Public Schools had the day off today so students could get tested after the holidays. They say they hope to have testing days like this in the future. And tonight at 6, we hear more from the Duluth Trafficking Awareness Coalition and other city leaders about the importance of January as Human Trafficking Awareness Month and from tribal leaders about how this issue disproportionately affects their community. Well, Dave, some snow headed our way. Yeah, tonight will be pretty calm and fairly mild by our January standards. Tomorrow morning, fairly decent as well. It's tomorrow afternoon where we get our next chance for snow. And so Weather Service has got these advisories ready for us for Tuesday afternoon, overnight into Wednesday. Winter weather advisory for Minnesota and parts of Wisconsin. Winter storm watch for the UP. And a real winter storm warning for Bayfield, Ashland, and Iron Counties. We'll have more on this coming up at 6 o'clock. That's your news at 5. The CBS Evening News is next. We'll see you at 6.